depends on depends on what horse I've, I've got at the competition and what uh, if they're lazy or a bit sharp. But in general, I like to lunge the horses if the, if the ground is suitable where we are. For maybe about 20 minutes um, to get them loosened up uh, without having the, the hindrance of me sitting on their backs. And then probably a half an hour's warming up in total. Um, after that, riding and trotting them around. I've ridden in the past and, and, and been longer, but actually I don't feel it's very beneficial to the horses, so their plan is sort of short and sweet and get on and do it. Depends on whether it's a one day event or, or a three day event. Um, can be slightly different, depends on the timings of the day, if your dressage is being quite close to your show jumping, obviously the horse is, is basically warmed up so I'll just do a little bit of trotting and cantering around um, and I wouldn't, I don't like to over jump them at the practice fence, try not to, I might just do one cross pole and then a smaller vertical, bigger vertical, so I might jump three verticals and maybe three oxes. Um, that's roughly, obviously, depending on how the horse is going. But you know, try. Uh, people have always said to me, try not to leave your your jump at the practice fence, and that's something that I'm very aware of. Um, and sometimes, you know, if the warm up area isn't suitable and the horse isn't jumping beautifully, jumping it 25 times might not necessarily make it any better. So you just have to um, play around even with those few jumping efforts. Um, so, and that would be the same applied to a three-day event, you know, when you're doing the show jumping after cross country, remember the horses are tired, so you need to do plenty of loosening up, but not actually that much jumping. Um, it, it, again, depends on when they've done their dressage and show jumping. Um, if they've done it the day before, obviously, and like at a three-day event, you, I like to be on the horses for about 45 minutes before. Um, to do some flat work, get them loosened up and cantering and then, then have a bit of a jump. At a one day event, again, you have to just use your initiative really, um, that if you've just show jumped and you've got change, then I would only jump a couple of cross country fences and if the horse has done it well, leave it at that. If they've been a bit spooky, just do a little bit more and get them moving on to, to, the, to the practice fence and get them jumping in a more forward rhythm. Um, but if you have had a few hours in between, yes, you do need to loosen the horses up a little bit. So you have to sort of work that one out really at the beginning of the day. It would be different for different horses. Obviously, if you've got a very nervous horse that gets quite wound up, you don't want to have them there too long. Um, you usually get called a couple of minutes before if I am on a buzzy horse, I might pretend I haven't quite heard that. I would let the steward, I would acknowledge the steward that I've heard them, but just try and stay away and then get there and go. Um, I will always try and when they do a countdown, not be in the start box at 30 seconds, I like to have walk them round the entrance, walk them round and then wait at you know five seconds and then just keep walking and walk in and go. Um, there are very few horses that I think would be able to go into the start box and actually stand still. I think that can cause you know a bit of tension uh, with the horses. If you've got a horse that is likely to whip around and start, just try and have somebody there that can just hold you, walk around the outside and then just let you go into the start box. It's just best to keep everything as smooth as possible. Um, the horse I've just ridden, um, we're here at Bramham, is Carrie Dub and he can be quite strong. He used to race and he, um, he's got better and better as, as the training has gone on but I ride him in a Waterford um, but I ride him in a Waterford um, sort of Dutch gag with the, the, ring, the three rings and actually I ride him with two reins because he's still He's not quite under control with the snaffle, but then I just have an extra rein for the gag rein, so I can just play with one or the other. Um, this horse, no, I generally ride him in a snaffle most of the time. Um, you know, he, he's now at a level that I don't need to know. He, he track naturally is on, on the bit. He, he works round and low because he's quite long in his back, and he benefits him to work long and low and stretch and, and, and lunge him a little bit. So for him, um, no, I mean I generally like to ride my horses in snaffles, um, I, I'm not really a gag person um, and I think this horse is getting quite close to maybe just riding him in a normal Waterford or a normal um, bit rather than the gag effect. The gag effect is there just as a bit of security 
um, when we're going for ten and a half minutes here, you know, it's quite a lot of time. Um, yes, I do use studs. Um, I think it, it you know, gives the horses confidence and, and not slipping. Um, here, uh, the ground is firm. Um, they've done a, a great job with watering the ground, so there is quite lush grass on firm ground. So I've put um, two studs in each shoe, um, a smaller pointy one on the inside, and then a more pointed stud on the outside, slightly bigger behind than in front. Um, just to give the horses that bit of support, but I haven't gone too big um, because you know underneath is the grass is is quite firm ground. Um, I often use most of the time I use my uh, Pro Light boots. Um, I've always used them. Uh, I find that they they don't rub, they don't slip um, in front and behind. Some horses I uh, use the open-fronted ones if if they're not so sharp with their front legs. Um, never had a problem with going cross country with open-fronted boots. Um, and then the careful horses I'd have the closed um, boots, and um, they have some overreach boots. On. Well, when they first finish, I try and wind them round slowly. I, I never cross the finish line and just stop them. I like to canter them and trot them around for a minute just so that they can wind down. And then we have, uh, as soon as we untack them, I get the tack off as quickly as possible because I don't like them to stand still too long. And then wash them off and, and get some cold uh, water on them as quickly as possible. So ideally, if somebody can hold them so that um, there's a person either side, ideally, if you've got enough helpers, um, to wash them off and scrape them off, get the water off and wash them and scrape them and then get walking them. So try not to leave them stood still any longer than necessary. really get yourself established at each level before you come into it so you know if you've never done it before I would say go to you know hunter trials or local shows or unaffiliated competitions to, to, to learn the job or go and gain advice from from professional riders or trainers as to you know how you how you get into the sport and then as you're working your way up you know, really get yourself established at each level. Don't move up from B100 to novice until you consistently can jump a double clear. Um, and the same for novices, you're consistently jumping double clears and you and the, right, and the horses are confident at that level before you move up. Um, the, the theory of, well, when the fence is a bit bigger, they'll be more careful is a ridiculous comment. Um, and it doesn't work. And, it's, and you know, you need to work on your training so that you can jump clear rounds before you move up the road, so that would be my biggest advice.